Disclaimer, this video is not intended to be any kind of professional medical advice. I am not a doctor. Please seek out your physician if you have questions regarding the subject I'm about to discuss here. Hello humans, my name is Kevin Cook. Recently, my girlfriend and I took a trip to Mexico's magic mushroom capital to embark on a journey of profound introspection. In this video, I'll share the tale of our experience for anyone else seeking to make a similar pilgrimage, and also for those curious to learn more about what a mushroom experience is like. Now, let's begin. Psilocybin mushrooms are a long-standing part of Mexico's history. Before being dubbed magic and becoming the global phenomenon they are today, hallucinogenic mushrooms used in religious ceremonies were considered sacred and were called God's flesh by the Aztecs. Our journey begins in Oaxaca, a state in southern Mexico known for its indigenous cultures. Last June, I actually spent a month in Oaxaca. It was a relaxing month in the coastal town of Puerto Escondido, surfing every day and soaking up the sun. And just a few hours drive away, high up in the mountains, are a few small towns where the cultivation of mushrooms takes place. However, the hot summer months aren't the proper season for harvesting this delicate fungus, which the locals call hongos. It's best to wait until Mexico's rainy season, during the months of August, September, and October. That's when the sacred fungus thrives. So I waited. June, July, and August passed. In the meantime, I traveled all over Mexico with my now girlfriend, Parvati. We drove through Chiapas and the Riviera Maya, filming videos and having a blast. A few times we'd spoken about mushrooms and she'd expressed her interest in trying them. Her father, after all, is a mushroom enthusiast like me. In fact, when I met him, he gave me this custom t-shirt. Mexico, Mexico. But even with the encouragement of me and her father, Parvati was afraid. A mí me da mucho miedo perder el control mental, que me dé ansiedad o el clásico no regresar del viaje. Finally, in September, we took a trip to Oaxaca together. We landed at the airport and took a three-hour bus ride up a nauseatingly winding road that led us to a tiny little town high up in the mountains called San Jose del Pacifico. I'm gonna apologize up front for the lack of video and photos from our trip here. We snapped a few shots here and there from my phone, but I specifically wanted this experience to be had without the camera. I've experimented with hallucinogenic substances for half my life, so I'm no stranger to the profound soul-searching experience that psilocybin mushrooms can provide. But it was Parvi's first time, and I didn't want her to feel the pressure of having a camera in our faces while we travel through space and time. In total, we spent three days in town. The first two days were spent scouting the place and preparing mentally. We wanted to be sure we were not only procuring the goods from the right person, but that we were going to be in the right environment and state of mind for our trip. After doing plenty of research, asking around, and walking to all corners of town, we settled on one spot, Cabañas Pacifico. It has cabins that cost about 100 pesos per night, about 40 US dollars, but it also has a restaurant on the second floor that serves up really good food. Inside the restaurant is a little old woman who provided us with what we were seeking. She was really sweet and took time to give us advice on how much to eat. She even offered to make mushroom tea for us, which I guess is how a lot of travelers that go there decide to ingest the mushrooms. On the table, she placed a few bundles made of large leaves. Each bundle contained a handful of various types of mushrooms. Some were apparently stronger than others. For example, the Darumbe was the strongest strain, while the Ninos were supposed to be a little more mild. For anyone experienced with taking mushrooms, you know, they almost always come in dried form. It's like beef jerky, but with mushrooms. Because they're harvested seasonally and can't always be made available, most of the year, the only option you have for eating magic mushrooms is the dried form. And even then, it's hit and miss. The psilocybin potency can decrease over time, even with well-preserved mushrooms. But folks, these were fresh mushrooms. And when I say fresh, I mean we had to clean the dirt off of these mushrooms. Before that day, I had never even seen fresh psilocybin mushrooms before. So we took our leafy packets back to our cabin overlooking a vast expanse of forest and sky, and we proceeded to wash the goods. The time had finally come. I had maybe four or five large Darumbe mushrooms in my packet, and I immediately just scarfed them all down. Fresh mushrooms are so much easier to eat, by the way, compared to dried mushrooms because they're 
mostly made of water and they don't taste bad at all really. It's the dried mushrooms that taste terrible. The fresh mushrooms have a fleshy texture and on the outside it's sort of brown colored, but the first bite reveals a dark blue color within. Parvi later described it as being like the blood of the mushroom. Parvati was taking her time, examining her mushrooms, preparing for the journey that was to come. All the while, my mushrooms were beginning to digest, so I went inside to begin making a fire. It's cold up in those mountains, so the past few days I've maintained a healthy fire for us in our various fireplaces. In all my past experiences with dried mushrooms, it normally took up to 45 minutes or an hour before I began to feel the effects kicking in. But folks, I was not ready for how quickly these mushrooms hit. I'd barely made any progress on starting the fire before I had to just stop what I was doing and go take a seat outside on the porch. Fresh mushrooms digest much more quickly than dried ones as I was learning. No more than 20 minutes had passed before the infinite eyes of the universe were all upon me. The hush of a deep void filled my ears. Sounds traveling to me now reverberated crisply, sort of like a faint winding. Twisting, laughing faces on the bright green leaves fixed their gaze on me. A primal fear within me was ignited. The same fear I had always felt when I realized, with a sense of utter finality, that there is no turning back. I was fully submitting my consciousness to the will of the ancient fungus. And just as I was realizing how powerful this trip was about to be, Barbie approached me with a concerned look on her face. She was really feeling anxious. The cabin we were in was not the ideal location to trip for her first time, in all fairness. It's my belief that deep outdoors, far from other people, surrounded by nature, is the best atmosphere for such an adventure. That was our original plan, but the unpredictable weather meant that we would likely get stuck in a cold rain shower, and neither of us were prepared to endure that, so we opted for a domestic experience instead staying within the confines of our cabin and its balcony with an honestly amazing view. But Parvati was sinking deeper into an introspection that she wasn't prepared for. Turns out she just nibbled on the cap of one Darumbe mushroom and was going to wait to see how it felt before deciding whether or not to eat more. But as it was turning out, just four tiny bites of this sacred medicine were enough to shake the foundations of her entire being. And in that moment Kevin told me, the mushroom is already in your body accept and surrender about it. Y ahí empezó mi viaje, fue ondulante entre momentos en que me sentía muy en paz y momentos en los que me asustaba. Y en los momentos que sentía mucha paz, sentía, bueno, me llegaba información de mucho amor y de unidad con el universo. What we experienced was nothing short of profound. There were gaps of deep sobbing followed by hysterical fits of laughter the whole time we hugged each other and stayed warm underneath the sheets of the giant bed. My eyes were filled with kaleidoscopic visuals that seemed to twist harder when I tried to focus on them. All the while those eternal eyes of the void maintained their gaze, as if to stare at the fabric of my soul. I remember feeling that that moment was occurring at the same time as all other moments in my life. Time was an illusion that had dissolved as my existence melded with all of eternity. I became aware that the energy within me, the energy that forms my consciousness, was, is, and always will be. Everyone is. Everything is. Everything is one thing. The name the ancient Aztecs coined for these hongos, God's Flesh, really feels apt during an intense trip like this. Some people will think I'm crazy for saying all this stuff. They'll discount my experience as just being a big illusion. But for those who respect the ancient fungus and treat it as medicine, then there are profound and potentially life-changing experiences to be had. There's now research indicating that psilocybin has been hugely successful in treating chronic depression. So before anyone gets their panties in a wad about breaking laws, just know this. The law isn't in place to protect you. The law is in place to maintain the order of society. If everyone went about eating the fungus, then the system we accept as normal might suddenly seem so utterly bizarre and unacceptable. This sort of awakening that might occur en masse would probably be catastrophic. Those who feel ready for the medicine may choose to seek it out at their own risk. But for the average folk in modern society, it's probably best to let this giant sleep for now.
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Give this video a thumbs up. Please help my channel. And I'll see you next time.